Hey, what's up, Liron here, and in this video, using this rural scene, I'm gonna show you how I approach creating that beautiful golden sense of sunlight uh, and how it affects the scene in its entirety. I hope you're gonna enjoy this one. Let's get started. So as always, I'll blast through the drawing stage. Uh, quite honestly, I think what I'll do with this process is be a little more laid back. Uh, I'm usually eager to talk about every small thing I'm doing here. Um, but I want to take it a little easier this time, just chill and <laughs> enjoy seeing the process. Um, so I'll, I'll just talk about whatever I feel like regarding the process. So uh, my main goal here, as uh, I mentioned, is to convey that beautiful golden sunlight feeling to it. I think I was somewhat successful, but this is something that's fairly challenging to achieve. And even though I was very focused and I worked quite slowly, there are a lot of things I see that I did not achieve as I want to. Now, I want to talk about two things that in my opinion are most responsible to this impression of conveying a good sense of sunlight and shadow. And I will mention that this is like five times speed, so don't draw as fast as I'm drawing. Uh, so one factor is definitely values. If you want to achieve this effect, a big part of it is to nail the values correctly. It's enough for one of the areas to be just a little bit different and the impression will change. I don't want to say it will necessarily be wrong because I don't think really there's just one right way of doing things. It depends on your intention. Uh, but I will say, for example, this wall in the shadow on the right side of the house, um, it was really critical for me to get it uh, the right value because if you go just a little too dark, you kill off the, the sense of depth within the shadows. If you go too light, there isn't enough sense of light where it is well lit, you see? So it's always a balancing act. Now with the first wash, my goal was actually to just set the tone. This is truly an underpainting. A bit of blue for the sky, a bit of yellow and green for what's below, just tinting the paper. Why? Because if you look at a reference photo, even the parts that seem quite light are actually quite dark, sorry, are actually quite light. If you look at the rooftop, it's got this beautiful yellowy muted golden color to it. That's actually a little bit darker than the sky, but just a tiny bit. And you want to get these things right. So what I'm doing now is establishing these lighter shapes because nothing here read to me as paper white. So I just kind of tinted it. Now the water at the bottom has this beautiful green brown feeling to them and I did want to capture that look. Uh, so you saw me doing a bit of wet and wet and so on. Now, notice how light this wash is. Um, again, the rooftop is so much lighter than it, m uh, so much lighter than it may appear to be. It's just a smidge darker than the sky. And that's important to preserve the sense of light and shadow. Now, one thing I wanted to do here is while I'm working on the rooftop is to connect it to the shadow underneath. And that's exactly what you'll see me do in just a moment. And also on the roof, on the, sorry, not on the roof, on the right side that's in the shadow. These connections in this stage are very important for me personally to achieve because that's what gives the painting uh, its unity and its clarity, okay? Just the viewer looks at it and it doesn't feel like lots of fragmented pieces. It feels like something nice to look at, you know? And it is a matter of taste. Some people may prefer the more messy look, that's fine. Uh, I personally like to have that bit of a connectivity to it. Notice how I even connected all of these wooden pieces, wooden planks, just to make sure that um, that they, they feel like a part of the object. Same thing with this right side of the rooftop. I am careful with the top. Again, I'm saying rooftop, right wall. I am careful not to have it blend too much with the rooftop itself because that started to dry. Now there's this small fence here. It's just small details. You don't have to get them fully accurately, okay? Um, my approach with this one was pretty deliberate. The entire video size, file size of all the videos of this process is actually at 20 gigabyte, which is a lot because I filmed both in 4K and because I really took my time with it. Um, <coughs> so you won't see the difference because I'm actually uploading it in 1080, uh, but I did want the possibility to zoom in if I choose to. That's something I'll 
start getting used to soon of how I want to film the videos because I didn't have the 4K option before. Now onto the foliage. Foliage is something a lot of people struggle with. Um, I will give you this advice. Just don't try and paint every single leaf you see. Paint it as one shape and this is exactly how I see it. It's just one shape. Now the foliage here is very, it's, it's misleadingly uh, dark. You would think it's lighter than it actually is, but it pops out quite significantly compared to the wall. The wall of that uh, bridge, which is a beautiful part of the painting. Um, so it does need to get its respect. And you, it may be easy to look at it and think, oh, there's so many highlights, like the yellowy highlights on it. Uh, and not that I did a perfect job, I'll probably redo this part. And I actually wanted to paint this with acrylics. Uh, because with acrylics, you can go over it and fix it as many times as you want. Just let it dry and keep fixing and fixing. Um, I feel like the result wasn't exactly what I was hoping for. I was hoping for something much more well polished. Which is funny because, again, I really took my time with this one. Uh, so as we're still in that uh, second wash, Again, the connectivity, connection, always connections. Uh, notice how I interpret this diagonal shadow there. It's very gentle, but you can still see it. Um, and I wanted to do it this way. Now, when I look at it now, it has a bit more warmth to it. Uh, just plenty of things to play around with and change. But even doing it a little cooler may enhance the sense of warmth on the bridge and on the other object. So who knows, it can work in our favor. Uh, I will say one thing, the wall still doesn't appear to be like the wall of the bridge, still doesn't seem to be as light and that is, or glowy, and that is because we still haven't put in the other shadows that will put it in the right context. And you will see as soon as we get the water in, what you see me do is moving, by the way, uh, the reference photo just to focus on different areas. It's on my computer. Um, once we add the water and all of the other values, the walls will turn shinier, okay? It all falls into the context. Uh, last week's videos have been quite uh, different in a way. I did this uh, cross contour video with Pokemon that I knew would get less, uh, fewer views, uh, but I'm very proud of it and very happy with it because I did something I actually wanted to talk about. And quite honestly, that's something you will see more of. Um, I will think of how to introduce it in a way that's still interesting and relevant, or at least as interesting and as relevant as it can be. Obviously, if you're just into watercolor, it's going to be a little different, but uh, it is important for me when I look at this channel long term to make sure that it's authentic to what I care about. Um, especially when you look at like, uh, so I'm nearing uh, 100,000 subscribers, which was a huge goal for me, by the way. I really uh, have been planning <laughs> to get to this number for a few years now. And as always, as soon as you get close to it, it slows down. Like I'm, I'm stuck at like 91 something. Uh, but in any case, I'm really grateful for every subscriber. If you look at it long term, I don't know how many subscribers I'll have in a year, two, five, you know, things. Maybe YouTube will be irrelevant at some point. Uh, but I don't know how many subscribers I'll get. But if it gets to, I don't know, double or triple the amount I have right now, then a lot of the new audience will hopefully naturally merge into the content I'm doing at that time. Uh, that's most relevant to me because it, it does change, you know. Uh, by the way, I'll just mention that this part is really important to get the value right because you want that sense of depth with the mountain ridge in the back. You want to keep these trees in the, in the side, so I'll actually use some uh, water, just spray on it to keep it flowing and moving a bit, which is going to be a nice little effect you can see here. Um, <coughs> So yeah, and I wanna say also how much I appreciate you because um, whenever I post a bit of an off topic video or a bit of an odd one, um, I always get such nice comments and people actually try to open their minds to videos that won't necessarily be their cup of tea. Uh, and I get a lot of comments that say just because it's me that do it then they'll watch it because they like how I present things. So for that, I'm super grateful. So thank you so, so much. Uh, and it, it's important for me to say this actually in a video that's more of a staple like this one because I know a lot of people will uh, hopefully resonate with this kind of a process. But uh, by the way, this uh, wall, I went a little darker. You'll see me lighten it a bit later on. Uh, it was really important for me to get it, the right value, as I mentioned. Um, but in case, yeah, so I'm just super grateful for that, um, for the opportunity to do the things that interest me and to not worry too much about it. And, you know, a lot of people ask, like, how do you 
I think too many people are number oriented on social media. They look at the number of likes and of course I have that as well. But there is something to quality that needs to be thought about. Um, I do think the depth and having good relations with your followers is way more important than the number. And, and I think smaller numbers are not to be taken lightly. Uh, a lot of people ask, how do I get more? How do I get more followers? But in subscribers, like growing on YouTube isn't easy. It's probably the hardest among all the platforms. And the answer is very simple. You just do your best and, and appreciate the followers you already have. Uh, that's huge if someone has th a thousand followers. If you make the content the most relevant it can be to these thousand people, the odds of attracting more people are just so high. Uh, and I'm just grateful for that, for, for you being here and, and giving me this opportunity uh, to do the things that interest me. It's pretty amazing, actually. So thank you for that. Really, I appreciate it. Uh, now, this is an important part. Uh, this arch of the stones, you know, that's a structure that can withstand uh, a lot of weight. These arches um, are very common in, in older European architecture, and, it, and it's really for a good reason. I, I did a lot of studies about it uh, when I practiced for my manga, for my comic. I wanted to realize and understand what structures look like back then. And these arches, I forgot the name. There's an actual name for, you know, these uh, um, ceilings. What do you call it with the with the um, oval-shaped poles that hold it, uh, pillars that hold it. I forgot what it what it's called, but you let me know in a comment down below. But that's a really strong structure. So I did want to convey that uh, in the drawing. And it is important to put these bricks in the right place pretty much, as much as you can, you know. Uh, so now I'm just putting in all of these smaller details, you know, um, dry brushy things. And these give the shadows a little more depth. Uh, reason being that you get to see inside the shadows and uh, that's really big. That's something it took me a long time to, to have a grasp of. Uh, and it's really funny how you go through these cycles. I remember being a little timid with my darks and not being able to go dark enough. Uh, added some water, by the way, just to lift back some of this to, to have it feel like light pours in. As you can see in the reference photo, it does happen. The light's a little more orange, but that's fine. <coughs> So yeah, I forgot my thread, <laughs> but I was, um, yeah, okay. So the, the depth in the shadows, we talked about that. Uh, dry brush in it, you can see through the shadows. That's really important. Oh yeah, yeah, going through cycles. Um, <laughs> going through cycles where I'm afraid to go dark enough. So I, I was really timid. And then I went the other way around and I used like really dark colors without even any second thought. And I was really proud of myself. And that's how you learn. You find the limits and then you learn where to stop. Um, so, so going to the extreme in this regard is really useful. Uh, and I got to that extreme and it really helped. Uh, and then I dialed it back and went a little lighter. And then you will notice and you will learn with time that there is so much nuance in the values more than you'd think, there is a very gentle difference between the range of the mid values and the darks and the light to mid values and dark to mid values. Um, there is a lot of variance in that, and it does matter. It all of these small things do add up to something that works out very nicely at the end uh, in the final result. And seeing these nuances, is, it's a challenge. I won't lie, I'm currently not seeing all of them at all. And I al always fall prey to optical illusions. That's something you have to deal with, seeing things very clearly, understanding why they appear the way they appear. Like if you look at the, again, the inside of the arch of the bridge, it's the left side. You see how this beautiful warmth is pouring in there. And that's an effect I missed. That's an effect I wasn't uh, focused enough to, to realize that it was there and how important it is. Uh, which is why I want to do another take of this in acrylics, because then I could just go over it, you know. Um, uh, but yeah, just watercolor is really magical. It's like uh, really a one-way street. You can't always correct mistakes. You can't really go back. Um, and it does teach you a lot, I think, about letting go and, and enjoying the process. Here we go, <laughs> darkening uh, these bit of foliage. That's really uh, an, a cool area that I like. Um, would probably really want to do to redo this specific one. Um, and that's how it is. I'm never fully satisfied with what I do. Um, maybe excluding some very specific paintings where I'm like, I'm perfect. That's the perfect impression uh, I wanted. So that's fine. 
Uh, by the way, I sprayed some water, then it spreads out. Pre-wetting, then putting in the paint. Um, you know, being unhappy with your work. And here I added a bit of warmth, by the way, to the to the side of the rooftop. I don't know, I felt like putting a yellow there. I felt like there it lacked in warmth. And here I am, by the way, lifting. So I'm putting some water on this wall and then I'm gonna get some tissue and I'm just gonna dab it a bit. And you see how it gets a little lighter? That was what I was aiming for. Uh, but in case, yeah, just dealing with um, dissatisfaction with your work, it's it's just a step in the direction. You have to understand it's there uh, and definitely not, not let it stop you. That's a big one because most people lose because they give up, not because they failed. Um, so here we go, adding the darker water. This felt important because I wanted the walls to sh really shine. And so far, they're kind of shining but oh, and by the way look at this cool swipe uh, that really fixed this shadow uh, so they were kind of shining but darkening some of the lighter sections can really help with that so just to add a bit more shine to it um, and now the wall is a little stronger and happier now there are a couple of more things i want to do like these small touches and then uh, i signed this too early because now i'm regretting it and i'm gonna go back and put some opaque paint now what do i put it for mostly for the highlights you see there in the distance and you will see them quite a lot of these just small tiny highlights uh, that i think look really good and really interesting and i would love to try that effect in acrylics honestly um, where you have a bit more control because i think there's a lot of play on the details that can be uh, achieved there and I, I just think it's a really cool effect um, you know these hazy paintings with the background that you can see some highlights is it but it's barely visible i love that effect and it's very random look at just random patterns i'm gonna pick some of that back up by the way with a tissue in a moment i caught a couple of highlights there on the rooftop i wanted to uh, make sure i get this is too strong again lifting it uh, and in a moment i'll show you the final result and i really hope you enjoyed this one and now let's wrap it up so thank you so much for watching once again. I hope that uh, beautiful sense of sunlight does show through in this painting. I took my time with it, worked a little slower just to make sure I'm a little more accurate. Um, it's funny because uh, these scenes are the type that I'm trying to now move away from and just do some more fun, unique stuff. This is a pretty plain or normal scene in a way, uh, but I do love seeing these types of paintings. I just want to try out new things. I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope you learned something new. Let me know if you have in a comment down below. I'm curious to hear how you found this one. If you want to learn how to paint like me, be sure to check out, as always, the link in the description box below to my frustration-free watercolor course. I really do appreciate you watching and I will catch you in the next vid.